Thank you for tuning in. I'm Bishop Monet of Smoking for Jesus Ministry. I appreciate that you would take the time. You will be able to have strength. You'll be able to have power to be a light for Jesus Christ. So remember to never forget where we are in this journey with Jesus, where you can be always prepared. I want you to continue praying for us in this last hour that we can be able to show the end times coming. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Asking you by your spirit. Now move in this place. We ask you, can you say, God, to rebuke any hindering spirits, anything that would stop, God, what you want done. Now our souls hang in the ballot. Many, God, souls hang in the ballot in this place right now. God, I ask you by your spirit, now, Lord, that you would move in such a way, God, that we would all want to know what moves what cause you, God, to do what you need to do, Father, that we can be on course, that our blessings will not be hindered, our children will be able to go on, Lord, to serve you to the fullness. Because of your love, God, because of your concern for us, God, so many years already, let it be done by your power today, Lord. Now, we, we seek what your spirit want to say, there are many things we can say, God, many ways we can go. But you're so gracious, you're so loving and kind. So we ask, God, that you might speak to our hearts this morning. There is things that are being prepared on the horizon right now. Tragedies, things that will happen that we could never even imagine, Father. Help us, Lord, to be tuned, Lord, now to what your spirit is saying. Let us not waste this time, God, just saying things, Lord, but help us to say what you want said today. We're asking by your spirit now. Let it be done. Let it be done, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. I want to uh, talk about just a little bit about yesterday and uh, the suffering that people are going through as we sit around like everything's okay. So I, I, I want to say to pray for these people that are homeless, people that are mentally ill. A lot of them have a lot of mental problems, a lot of mental problems going on, things that we might take lightly that have took toll on them after year, after year, after year. And then they just give up. They just give up. They, they, some of them had jobs at one time. Some of them did well. But the pressure, pressure run people out. A lot of people you see just hanging around are not just hanging around because they want to. It's because some tragedy, some disappointment, some stress, some things that they've been wrestling for year after year after year, and it's over. So keep that in mind now as you look around, because the people that struggle, you know, you may not know nothing about it, some of them, but you don't know everybody. You know some things that's going on, but some things you don't know. So our greatest weapon is prayer to be able to go to the Lord and ask the Lord to help people. Because you don't know the people's background. You don't know what, what has happened to them all their life. And then now you're looking at now how they act now. But you don't know the wagon that's been loaded from a child. I, I was listening to that, that song. And I never paid no attention to the words to that song. That old song? I never really did. I'm telling you, I, I see why I can jump out mugging somebody mugging you and stuff. Y'all didn't see the words to that song. Y'all didn't see y'all. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. That's the name of the song. Right, that's right. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You, you didn't see the words to that song. That's an old song. I've heard that from a child, and I never paid no attention to what they were talking about anyway. 
Sometimes you got to settle down and just talk through. Huh? Look at the, the look at the, look at the trauma and, <laughs> and all that stuff going on in that song. Yeah, in that song, they got so much stuff going on that, that people was singing it, trying to get some people's attention that in another world, but most of them was in that world during that time. So they understood what was going on, what was being said that caused people. And let me, let me tell you something. Without the love of God, you going to bust the pipe. It's just going to take a matter of time because the stress and the, yeah, and the, the trauma and the different things and the demons from hell that attach on to them so run you crazy. Without the blood, without the power of the resurrection, without you understanding that love of God that he let his son shed for you. Until you can understand that and then nothing else don't matter if not your feelings run you crazy. Huh? Feelings run you crazy. Now all this is uh understood through faith. Now, I was talking about the heart last time. That old heart that wicked and deceitful who could know it. That's what I was talking about. I was talking about the new heart that God's supposed to put within us when we become born again, huh? that we could be able to grow in grace and be able to learn how to function from that heart, not the old heart. All right? Yeah, you get that. So that's where I'm headed because all your answers come from that old heart. Your deliverance is going to come from what you really believe in your heart. Because if you don't believe what's right in your heart, you're going to turn the whole thing sideways. So I'm going to the root of the problem because no matter what it is that you need to be delivered from, your heart going to have to be right. Y'all got that? So I'm cutting the chase out here. I don't have time because I think Jesus is coming. <laughs> So I got to cut that, got to get to the root of it, and I'm going to back up out, be able to show you that there's mighty deliverance in the love of God. You didn't hear what I said. In his love. That's where deliverance is. Now, if you've been deprived of ever experiencing that love, then you're not going to be able to love because you don't have real love. You get real love from what God has actually done for you. So it don't matter what you think about me. It's what God has done for me. So I don't have to try to impress you, try to please you, no, no, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about being a Christian now. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, I, would, I draw from him. Now, if you don't know how to draw from him, then you have to draw from yourself, from your emotions, your feelings, your soul. You have to draw from that person. Because you have to learn how to draw from him. Now, I'm trying to get back on course. So, how, this is how I'm going to learn how to draw. Uh, the scripture I left off with, when Jesus said, the first commandment, you have to love God with all your heart. And go there, and then love other people like you love. See, that's a, that's a conflict of interest, that in me. That didn't mess the whole thing up, because God was good. But then people don't be good all the time. That messed me up. So, uh, Charlene, I, I hear you. Uh, Charlene, I hear you. I hear you hollering. But that kind of messed me up right there when you go to that scripture. Watch what he do. He's talking about that love. That love that's going to keep me from going adrift. Now, you can sit and think what you want. 
All the mighty men I know in Scripture, and even Paul in the end said, I could give my body to burn, but if I don't have love, it ain't about nothing. Nothing. So if you don't, you, you don't want to hear what I got to say, but if you don't get the love right, then you're going to turn the thing now. Because my heart ain't right. I don't know why you think yours right all the time. You can even say to yourself, you know that ain't right. But if you're an honest person, say, man, come on. You can even say to yourself, you know that ain't right, but I just feel like that. And I just want to do that like that. What is wrong with you? Blame your grandpa Adam, don't just, and Eve and them. They messed that up for us. With the very simple thing of not trusting that God was able to take care of them. They wanted to take care of themselves. They didn't see that like that. Oh, y'all don't hear me, young fella. You don't hear me. It's the same problem. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. Same thing. They didn't just believe that God couldn't do that. Because God kind of old-fashioned. Now, the, the world wasn't but two days old. Shut up. But, but God kind of old-fashioned. You understand? He, he up to speed with this. Huh? Go and read. I got to go. Come on, I'm trying to get myself together. I'm sorry. Matthew yep. 22, verse 37. Yes, sir. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, uh -huh. and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, mm -hmm. and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Say, all the law and all the prophets hang on these two. So now you don't even go nowhere else then for a little while until you get that straight. You got to get that straight. Say, Pastor, you just want to stay there all the time. You don't understand. If you don't stay there and get it straight, you ain't going nowhere anyway. You're not going to move because if you can't get that type of love that he's talking about. Now, keep in mind, that second part, you can't do without the love of God. Hello. Because you're going to be mad. Tell the truth. You know you... <laughs> That's that other heart. That's that old heart that he's trying to take out. Now, I, I want to, and some, if you don't want, then excuse me then. All right? That's all. No problem. I want to help you to see, I'm not just making this up. This comes from the Old Testament setting. That's the reason Jesus had to come, because they couldn't get the heart right. They did everything else, but they couldn't get, so Jesus said, God say, I'm going to send my son. He's going to come and die, and he's going to fulfill the scripture where they're going to put a new heart in you. Because if I can't get your heart to change, then knowledge going to puff you up. Amen. Knowledge ain't do you no good. You're just going to know something. <laughs> but your heart's still the same. See, because knowledge don't help an individual heart to change. That don't help you. You got to get the love of God in your heart. That's what you're talking about. How am I going to get the love of God in my heart? First of all, you're going to admit that your heart ain't right. You're going to repent. I, I cannot be judging everything with this heart I got. But the heart ain't right. Now, if I could get over that point to admit the truth of the matter, then I can stop being so critical of other people. So if you criticize them, where that they put you? Where they gonna put you on your, you mean you on, you higher than, right? No, no, you can be criticizing, and it, especially when you don't lift a finger to help. How you criticize and you only looking out for you? You're a little hard wicked, see? That's why Jesus tells, and God himself said, then you have to become a living sacrifice. That's how you're going to work on your heart. You will sacrifice somebody else. Boy, ain't nobody talking to me here. Huh? I better go somewhere overseas with this message or something. I better go ahead on with this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, 
Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to get it together. I'm trying to put it together. Lord, help me. Now, understand and read that. Read the scripture. Let me, let me go. I ain't going to try to stay too long in no place here. Huh? Last one you quoted was? Yes, yes. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now, as touching things often as idols, we know that we all have knowledge, knowledge puffed up, but charity edifies. Uh -huh. Now, charity edifies. Now, but I want to focus on, on your identity uh, after you come from Christ. When you come, let me say that better. When you come to Christ, your identity change here. Yeah from who you used to be before you were born again. I think most people still using their old license. Their identity have not changed. Because your identity is supposed to change. The Lord was showing me something the other day. He said, look, the identity has to change now because you are not the same person anymore. Huh? You're not the same person. So when that identity change, you become a different person. Huh? Uh, in Hebrews 13, verse 5, let me work from that angle and show you where I'm coming from. In other words, you get another identity now. Now, God don't see us like we see ourselves. After we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we supposed to, I know, in his eyesight, he see us different. Now, you don't measure up to the standard of what he's seeing, but this is how he see you and promising, expecting the change. Now, I'm going to say that again. He promised that because what his son did for you, you are going to change. Now, you don't even believe it at that point. <laughs> Y'all know that, no fun, no. Because in some things, it's hard to change. In some habits... Some generational stuff that come back to visit you like a bandit. Okay, I'm the only one. Okay. So you playing games, that's what you're doing. So if you don't tell the truth, the truth makes you free. So you got to tell the truth by yourself. Just you in the mirror. You in the mirror and you say, you know, girl, uh, 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 brother, that's right, yeah. You got to tell the truth. That's how you get free. Because why would God deliver you from something you don't have? What good is that going to do you? You have to come clean. Better? Read the scripture. Come on, let's go. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For ye have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Huh? Better? You see that? In other words, now, let's go over that right there. I ain't going to move right quick. Uh, easy Bible says, watch. Let's stay there a while. In the way that you live, do not want lots of money. Be happy with the things that you have. Uh -huh. Be happy because God has said this. I now, now, the, the Easy Bible used, be happy. Be satisfied. King James Version say, be content in whatever state you have. Whatever you got, be content with that. Don't be always looking to do somewhere else. And I, when I get this, I'm going to feel better. And when I do this, I'm going to be all right. When I be able to go on vacation every day, I'm going to be feeling good. I guess you would. But you understand that? In other words, be content where you are. That, that's, how, that's how you get to do God's will, because you're content. You ain't crying to get out. You be content with whatever God doing. And you stay with it. Uh-huh. Yeah, come on, watch. I will never leave you. Now, why are you content? Because I will never leave you. That's why you get that. It don't matter what, what's going on. You that. <laughs> it ain't nobody better than you. So what? So what the problem is? Well, you got an internal problem. You don't trust either. Yeah. See, so you got a problem. You just got to find the problem. The problem is with you. That's why you're acting up. Because you thinking 
Somebody better than him. Or he done lost his clock. He don't know it's time to do something. He ain't lost nothing, baby. He got him out the plan. Because what God do, he be working uh, all kind of ends when you work and stuff. Because when he going to do it, he going to bring it all together. Mm-hmm. Now, watch him now. Because he is magnificent. And he is thorough when he do something. Because he want us to go to glory. He's not just for this year and you look good tomorrow and after that nobody know your name after. What is all that about? He works for eternity. I don't need to fool with that now. Then, God got it set to get you to be able to identify, you are his child. You are a child of God. You have been adopted by what Christ has done. So you become a child of God. So you got to identify as a child, as his child, as he trained, as he gets you to truly identify with him. See, we don't truly identify with him when we first get saved. It takes years. It takes working on you. Because you don't act like he do. Amen. Identify with him. This how he would do such and such. Now, first of all, you have to know when he's training us to become, when you train children, you, you, the first thing they need to know is, I am correcting you for your good. So the father has to get you to be that uh, relaxed with him. Trying to say the right thing. That you be relaxed with him, that you would let him have his way. Where he can train you to become his child. Now, if you come in there thinking you know what you're doing already, then you're going to have to go through some more rigorous training. Because if you can come humble, it would do you better. Amen. That you can humble yourself, he knows best. Yes. Ain't nobody want to talk to me, Mr. Dodge, what's happening? Amen. <laughs> See that? So, you have to humble yourself. Now, you have to humble yourself and be obedient. I, I'm trying to make it clear. Fight. You have to you can be obedient to what he says at that very moment. At that very time. Now, no, no, don't even look at yesterday. Because it might not even match no kind of way. Oh no, you, well, you're going to get messed up if you think he's going to work the same way. No, no, he's coming different. Because he has to get you to improve in how you react, how you respond. Now, now, I'm trying to go, Lord. Keep in mind that he truly loves you. That's going to be the first thing. That child has to know that she or he is loved. And I am doing this for your good. I want you to become anointed. I want you to be powerful. But I don't want you to be deceived. Because if you get the big head and nobody can tell you nothing, not even me, so you're going to be in trouble. Because you're going to have to be obedient along the way. And what God does, he switch stuff. He don't do stuff the same way. Now, this child must always remember who has the reins, who are controlling everything. Now, the pillar to deliverance and healing is found in my confession and my surrendering to him that controls all things. Now, I got to surrender. I have to surrender. You have to surrender. 
Every one of us have to surrender to him to let, to show, not, not God as much as our own selves. Because we have to be able to see and know that what God is doing. Now, I'm going to move for just a little bit here. And Proverbs, Proverbs 3, verse 11. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, he gives wisdom to run this course. To follow this course through and not get discouraged. Okay? Uh, he have to discipline. He have to train to get you to be able to get your attention and also to prove, uh, you have to be proven that you will be able to trust his judgment without feeling it, without thinking it through. It's by faith. Nothing else. Okay, good read that. I'm not going to stay that long, but go ahead. My go son, ahead. despise not the chastening of the Lord, uh -huh. neither be weary of his correction. Neither be weary of his correction. In the uh, uh, message Bible right there. Don't get weary when he's corrected. Because correction gets like this, like I'm talking, and it go a low spot. <laughs> it's not a high spot. But this is where God began to examine the heart. God don't examine the heart when you are being uh, praised. He examine the heart when we have to be corrected. To see how we going to react, how we going to respond to correction. I don't know if I can stay that too long. Huh? Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. But don't, dear friend... Resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. You sulk. Huh? Amplified version. Huh? My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Uh -huh. Learn from your mistakes and the testing that comes from his correction through discipline, nor despise his rebuke. I'm human just like y'all. I don't like that either. <laughs> but I know it's, it's, it's necessary to grow with God. See, it's necessary to grow with him. That's not because I, 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 I want to be able to hear him when I get up in the morning and talk. I, I like the communication. I like the fellowship. You understand that? So I want to be able to talk to him. But sometimes he's saying, mm, that wasn't done right. That wasn't like, you shouldn't have did that just like that. It was all good, but you didn't say that right, or you didn't do that right. Huh? See? So, to humble us where we can be able to get to the place where we can be able to trust his judgment. Now, because what he wants is we can have this relationship with him. See? There's a relationship that have to be built because you're going to need it if you're going to live a while with him. So you're going to have to be at a fellowship. And, and, and you can't be uptight when you come to prayer for in your mind you got something else you got going on. And I'm throwing it down because see, it's supposed to be a relationship you have been with him from day to day. Huh? Hour to hour. But sometimes you might be doing something else and, and he'll speak. You know something wrong. You don't know what's wrong, but you know something wrong right now. Because he want a relationship with you. Now see, if you violate and you're not obedient, you, he breaks the relationship. The fellowship. Now, let, let's go on then. That's how you open the doors for these other spirits. To torment you now. Now, now I'm going to stay right there with you. I got to try to keep myself in the state of he loved me all the time. He cared for me all the time. <laughs> I got to keep myself in that state. Because I got voices coming. I got experiences. I got 
problems. I got people <laughs> coming at me. But I got to always, all right, pay attention. Pay attention. Don't pay attention to that. Huh, pay attention to, I love you. I'm trying to go to the, I love you scriptures that God gave. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go to that. I think I got away by when I switch. But I, I, I want to show you how much he thinks about us in scripture. How much he always concerned something for us. It's magnificent. I'm so excited I can't find it. Because <laughs> it's, it's just so exciting that it's right there in Scripture. I, I was telling my wife, after David messed up and he come back to the Lord, you could see the difference from before when he was a little cocky shepherd boy and he was one that thought he had it all together. And then when he come back, you see how he humbled now, trusting. Uh, I, let's say I remembered one of them. Uh, Psalms 139, verse 1. And he goes on a long dissertation of how much, how much he believed God loved him so much. Now, he blew it up, but by that time, yeah, you know that. But he come back, but when he come back, he really got it. Because before, you know, uh, he, he blew it after the man told him, Bathsheba is so-and-so husband. Go get her. Uh, you know that, see? So, but that attitude. Now, remember, during that time, he had had great success in everything he did, boy. And God was great to him. But he had no prompting, no yielding to the man say, that's that man's wife. Day? You call him Day. You say Day? The Day, that's that man's wife, Day. You don't do that now, Day. But no, he couldn't say that far away. He told him to his face. And that other spirit that was controlling him during that time didn't made him blank eye. You need to read your Bible or something, huh? Don't you see the difference? Now, after God dealt with him with that, because if you know the story, he kept it for a year until nobody else saw. And then no Nathan the prophet come in. Nathan got it through revelation, not knowledge. Revelation, he got that. He picked it up in the spirit and put his hand and told David, gave you the man. Now David got mad over some sheep. Huh? David got mad. I ain't talking about no sheep. I'm talking about what you literally did. Mm-hmm. Because he was trying to talk about killing somebody about some sheep. <laughs> he deserved the killing. Huh? They see it. So it's all tied together. I go on and on through scripture if you want to know the truth of how God had to deal with his heart. But here, 139, verse 1. Oh, Lord. Lord. I thought I'd read it in the easy Bible because it was so good. I can't think what version I had. I'm, I'm, I'm all tore up this morning, man. Come on. Read Easy it. Bible. Easy Bible say what? Lord, you look deep inside me, uh -huh. and you know all about me. You know when I sit down, and you know when I get up. What that he, he get he that now? He tried to hide over years so from God after what he did. Now he that. He said, God, you know me. Come on, watch. And you know when I get up. Even when you are far away, you understand what I am thinking about. You see me when I go out, and you see me when I stay at home. Wait, wait, wait. He finally became a real Christian and woke up to who God is. You ain't no Christian yet. See, you think you can get away with stuff with God. That's why the protection that book got. That you don't drift from that. 
You'll never drift from that. I don't care how much you think you know what you do it. You don't drift from that. Once you drift from that, now when you start mocking around with your own life and telling God what he needs to do and all you drifting, watch where you all go. Go on. You know everything that I do. For true? <laughs> you try to be slick now. For true? Come on, go ahead, brother John. Go ahead. Watch. Yes, Lord, before I open my mouth to speak, you know what I will say. You are all around me, in front of me, and behind me. Oh, no. That's too much confidence there. Now, you got to live up to that one. You hear what he said? Come on, go ahead. Watch. You put your hand on me to help me. You know so much about me. It is wonderful. Now, I watch. All he's doing, and he's going to go on and on, showing how much confidence he has in God and what God can do. I take a little revelation. No. Open up your heart. Come on, go ahead. Watch. I cannot understand it. My thoughts cannot reach as high as that. Is hey! it? Now you try to understand what he just said right there. Oh, you're not, or you just didn't turn it off. Now, I know I'm going to lose some of y'all because you ain't going to be able to go that far. You can't go that far. Oh, that is bad. It's too bad. It, it, it's just too bad. Everything there is except for surrender, denying yourself, a living sacrifice. Oh, that's in that passage there. Look, we'll read a little bit more. Go ahead. Come on. Is there anywhere that I can go to run away from your spirit? Uh huh. Anywhere that I go, you are already there. If I go up to heaven, you would be there. If I dig deep down into the ground to reach Sheol, you would be there too. If I fly away to where the sun rises in the east or to the other side of the sea in the west, you would be there. Uh -huh. You would use your hand to lead me. Your strong right hand would keep me safe. I might say I will hide myself in the dark and the light round about me will change into night. But it is never too dark for you to see. For you, the night has as much light as the day. Well, 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 somebody a fool here then. Because if that's the truth, then it's gone, but brother, I need to go ahead and surrender. Because nothing I'm going to be able to get away with. Nothing you're going to be able to get away with. And he examined your heart at the same time. And all your movements and everything you would think or do and think you slick right now, you are not thinking out thanking him. Nothing. Now, you say, well, man, Pastor, I ain't doing all that. Well, them demons say, you don't have no power. You don't have no power. I say that to you. You don't have no power because the only power you're going to have is the trust you have in him. So if you plan hide and seek with some of that stuff, like you know you don't, but you're trying to perform, then you get caught. Because you don't trust him. The key is trusting him. How much can you trust him? What do you have you hold it on to that you don't trust him? That's what you got to ask yourself all the time. What are you holding on to you don't trust him with? Your life? Well, you've been supposed to give that away. You're supposed to get that way when you first accept Jesus. But well, your life's still your own. What? You direct violation to scripture. So you're supposed to get your life away. Huh? What, what else? Huh? Uh, my ambitions of who I want to be. My dreams of what I want. We're getting quiet now, huh? Yeah, see that? Yeah, what you still holding? You still holding on to that. You haven't given that to him. You have a standard that you've set. And I'm not talking about getting nasty or going off course. I'm talking about a standard to what you believe. Not what would he want from you. Examine yourself. Well, there's going to be a serious spiritual warfare all the days of your life to surrender. 
Every one of us. Because keep in mind, when you stand before him, he's going to examine what did you really do? Why did you do it? Huh? Now, you know, Paul makes a statement. He say that when I, when I die, then he's going to check to see what kind of foundation I built on. See? He said, Lord, going to check to see what kind of foundation I built this on. Was this foundation built on uh, what you wanted, trusting you? Uh, some will build on hay. Some will build on stubble. Some will build on gold. Huh? What foundation? So this is a little bit more uh, depth than what you might want to admit. When you say, I surrender to the Lord, then you have to surrender your life. Because that's what he's going to look for when you stand before. Christians I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, if you call for a particular ministry, yes, do. You would have to commit to that completely. All right? See, it's not a part-time service. AI generation. Part-time. Huh? Just part-time stuff. No, it's totally committed. To it. So he's going to check to see what did you put into that? Huh? Did you give it all? All in. Hmm? All right. I'm going to leave you alone with that. We're going to read it. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So as by fire. So you're going to be tested. What was your motive for doing it in the first place? Was the motive to satisfy yourself or to satisfy God? What was the motive? To help, to bring people that you know God love and care that might not have a chance? Or was it just to promote you? What was the motive? Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's examination all the time he's doing. So I need to stay close to the way he is because when I meet him for real, I, I'm facing that person that you're reading in the Word, how he react, how he behave, what he did. So I need to stay close now because I can't come with another preconceived idea. Christians. And everybody going to be called according to what you were born to do for the kingdom, to promote God's kingdom. Not the church come in that, but it's to promote the plan of salvation and how salvation is laid out. Now, I'm running out of time. I got to go back. Then he starts it off with your heart. You get your heart right first, and then... You show your heart because you love other people. Once you get salvation, you get deliverance, then you show it through trying to help somebody else to get it. So you dedicate your life. Now, you're not like the worldly people. It's not a part-time service. It's your life is given to it. Now, that's why he requires you to witness. He requires you to tell other people about your salvation. That's what he does. He wants you to do that because he wants you to be a light to help somebody else. I remember I need to go to Discipleship 101. Discipleship 101. That they use a funny word uh, to most people. Follow me. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. But we don't follow nobody. Follow yourself. Follow me. That's discipleship that you would follow 
the example and the pattern that he set, how he gave his life for the world, for everybody. You follow him, you become his disciple. That's what a Christian is supposed to look like. Following Christ. He follows Christ. Glory to God. Come on, read that. I've got to go, Elder. I'm, I'm, I'm about out with it. Go ahead. Luke 9, verse 23. Uh-huh. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Now, I forgot to tell you, you got to deny yourself. You can't follow him with you. No, no, you got to deny yourself. You got to follow him being obedient to what he said. Some people follow Jesus, they follow him. No, 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 you follow him, but you are out of control. You're under his control. Somebody control you. Yes, ma'am. He wants to control you. And if you are not controlled by him, you are controlled by your natural abilities, your flesh. Too much. So, to be delivered and stay delivered, that's what we have to. So you have to stay delivered. So, as we continue to learn about all these strongholds, all these things, I'm going to always add in how to stay delivered. Because if you get delivered and don't stay delivered, the scriptures say seven more demons come and you become worse than you were before. So you have to know how to stay delivered. So deliverance is consistent. Not a one time lay hands on and you free. Deliverance is finding a consistency where you can communicate with God, huh? talking back and forth with him, fellowshipping with him, and the best thing would be for you and your flesh is every day. <laughs> Take off too many days, you go to hang it up. So you got to have a consistent Fellowship. Look, guess what? The example I was looking at yesterday about new converts. When new converts come to the Lord, the first thing you want them to do, of course, is accept Jesus. After they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, then they have to be consistent. Coming to church in a Bible study, consistent Bible study every week. They want them to be in. Where they could be to get a habit of being in the Word. That they could be able to begin to remember scriptures. Remember why scriptures. That's how you get this. Because if you don't write down those scriptures, like some of y'all, I don't give tons of them. If you die, all of them going to flash at you and the Lord going to say, you sitting there, you don't, you don't remember? That's dangerous. To do that because that's what he's gonna require when you stand before him and then when you say well I didn't know that he's gonna flash that big scream at you say it was right there you, you, you remember it now I'll give you a mic if you want to say I'm lying <laughs> if you want to come tell, tell me ask me something if you think that ain't true you are that's dangerous what you're doing because all them scriptures going over the top of your head. And then when you die, at judgment, I need to tell you this, at judgment, then you're going to see them again. That's going to be scary. Your knees going to be knocking. Because you're going to remember I said that. And you're going to stand before God, and you ignored, despised, turned off all the word that was read before you. What you going to do then? Oh, you're going to tell God you ain't like that? <laughs> God said, you should have read the word you were setting up there under to see how I am. I'm not, God's not me. Because actually, if God was like he was in the Old Testament, you would never walk out the door. <laughs> You'd die right there where you are. Yeah, if he was like in the Old Testament. Judgment. But his mercy and grace right now, 
That's the only reason you're getting away with it. Huh? See? So you got to be careful now. I'm warning, yeah. Because how are we getting late for this? Because you need to understand what you're doing with the word. Because I've been giving the word for almost 50 years now. Huh? Yeah. Since I got saved, I started preaching. So that would be what? How many years? 1976. I started preaching 1989. Do the math, Matt, 1989 to now. How many years that is? I was preaching before that. That's 35 years. But I was preaching before that, maybe another seven years for that. About 40 some years. Okay. So we've been giving the word. Some of y'all been setting under the word. Don't tell your age now. You've been setting under the word. You've been setting under the word for almost 30 years. Huh? You, you, you know what? Not, you don't remember now, right? Okay. You got that? Yeah, that's how long. Amen. But just to show you that God got all that stacked up waiting for you. Because you didn't heard the word. You even was so arrogant, you would go to sleep. Then you go wake you up and say, you did hear that, but you didn't want to do nothing with it. So this is dangerous. It almost would be better for me not to give you the word, but that would be against me. So I'm going to always keep giving you the word for what God has said. Now, it takes time for us to get anything, I see. Now, you, and I'll leave you with this thought, light flashing, having a right relationship with yourself and with God. That's the next thing I want to do. Having a right relationship with yourself and with God. Because if you lie to yourself, there's nothing you could do before God. I read Romans 5, verse 8. No, sir. I didn't. Let me close with that. Romans 5, verse 8. Yeah. Now, it's because of his love that's why God still doing it this way, because he loves you, and he don't want you to go to hell. So he will keep on trying until that run out, because his grace is going to run out. Then it's over. But you won't have no excuse when you stand before him that he didn't give you a chance to get it. God is love all the time. Love is the first thing he always uh, uh, come up with first to help a person. He always going to show he love him. He always do that like that. He's not going to come from the cut the head side. He always going to come from love and give him a chance. So this is why he come up with love, long-suffering, merciful, Amen. stuff like that. That's the way he is. So he'll be long-suffering, patient. Amen. See, that's God. God like that. God is not, that when God is slow to anger, Amen. the scriptures say. He get angry, but he's slow to anger. He don't hurry up and just tear you up right quick. But he gets angry. And all you got to do is keep despising his word. You push him to it. But it takes him a while. Because he can't. Read the scripture. Come on. But God committed his love toward us uh -huh. in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He said while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's his love. That's how he showed love. He just keep, right now, there are people right now don't, he's not thinking about it, but he's still doing it. He's still giving a chance for you to repent. Because you don't understand hell is forever. But you don't really understand that. That don't, that don't dawn on you yet. Forever and forever. And you are not going to get no relief. <laughs> and you can cry and you can holler and you can do whatever you want. You gonna... And you saying you don't care. So he said, come on then. We got you. We got to hold you then for it. Because that's the way he is. But he, he long suffering with it. 
Don't give you a chance to get the truth. Now, I need to say this as I close. Nobody can change their heart. Nobody can change their heart in here. You got to admit it's desperately wicked and deceitful. And ask God, give me a new heart. Change my heart, Lord. I don't like my heart. And I might not think I'm all that bad, but you think I'm that bad because that's what you said. I want my heart to change. Now, this is how I'm going to turn all these old curses, all these old demons, because I'm going to give my heart to you. And you're going to give me power to be able to overcome, to be delivered. Huh? Now, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making it simple. There's a lot of stuff in what I said, but I just want to show you the technique first is to surrender. Once you surrender, you can get free. You can get free. Nothing going to hold you. But the key is from within, not out. You got to make that move to say, Lord, I believe you love me. And I know you care for me like that. I want you to have my life. I want you to control me. Ah, that's it. That's what he's waiting on. I want you to open up my understanding to what's really real. Because you got all, everybody talking about stuff real today. The young people are so bombarded by the internet and all, you don't know which way is up. Huh? The stuff they're talking about, now nah, I don't even get into it. It's foolishness, but you can't see through it. So, if you really want understanding and wisdom, I invite you today, I don't care how long you've been coming to church, whatever you want to do, will you ask him to come into your heart? Lord, take my heart. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I don't want just talking about coming to no church no more. I want to be a different person. I'm talking to young people here. And if you could do that, then you could get him to change the way you think. Because the thinking is the problem. Because if he can change your mind here, what, once a heart, he, you're going to be able to understand. You're going to be able to see things you never could understand before. So I challenge you. Try it. Try it. Lord, take my heart. Come into my heart here now. Thank you for tuning in. This is the day that you've tuned in, and this could be your final day. But take advantage that you can be right with God when you die. So I want you to repeat this prayer. Remember me, Lord. I'm asking you right now to come into my heart. I want you to wash me in your blood. And you said if I believe it and confess it, then I'm saved. So right now I believe I'm saved. And what you allowed your son to do on Calvary is good enough. It's perfect to get me into glory. Now I thank you for this opportunity. Once again, in the name of Jesus, amen. For more information on how you can contact us, please write to us at Smoking for Jesus Ministries, 1804 FM 2342, Burnett, Texas 78611. Or you can visit us on our website. That's www.smokingforjesusministry.org.